I want to talk to people for a second who have service jobs. So you work in a service industry, you do AC or you do home repair or something. So let's just say, let's just say that you work for a plumbing company. And let's say that it's a huge plumbing company in a pretty good sized city, like for example, say Seattle. Now, you may not know this, but your boss wants to give you guys a raise that work for that company. Because most of these companies make their money off of your performance out in the field, doing the work for customers that call in because they need a repair, probably, right? Correct. So how are you going to make more money for your employer so that he makes enough money that he can justify paying you more since that's what you want. Everybody wants to make money. No one's in it to be completely benevolent and do stuff for other people. Well, I'm going to get to the point on this. So if I say something that is important and you're like going, well, maybe it's not, believe me, it actually is. I'm just going to, for brevity's sake, keep this nice and short and truncate my, my presentation. Okay. So let's start with this. Your appearance and your attitude are enormous because when people call a service company because they need something done, when you show up at their door, you're the person who what they're hoping for is the person who's going to come in, be professional, appear trustworthy, appear knowledgeable, appear like you are there to solve their problem and you care. If you can sell that when you're on the job, you're going to make more money and you're going to get more jobs. And people that might have been going to shop around or get another estimate, if they're really comfortable with you, they're going to just say, okay, do it and set an appointment to do it or have you do it right then. Another thing is there is a ton of money to be made from referral work. So if you show up and you're the kind of person that people like, when their neighbor's stuff breaks down and they say, hey, I need to get this fixed, well, they're going to recommend you. So that's really important. So how you make your, com your, your, your customer feel comfortable starts before you even get there. When you show up, have a clean car. Don't roll in there looking like you just drove from Alaska. Wash it off. Clean your windows. You know, if you've got a muffler that sounds like a jalopy, get that fixed so you show up and you look like you're at least successful enough that you can maintain your vehicle. People notice that. Another thing is you want to go in there wearing clean clothes. Don't go in, well, I'm just a plumber. It doesn't matter. I'm going to get dirty anyway. No, actually, it matters a ton. You need to dress clean and appropriate for what you do. Wear a polo shirt. You could wear dockers or nice jeans. Wear shoes that, that don't have holes in them. You know, look like you can afford to buy clothes when you show up to these people's houses. If you're going to charge them a thousand dollars to unclog a drain, you can at least buy the clothes and wear them that look good. And I know you might say, well, I'm going to end up under their sink and ruin my clothes. That's what coveralls are for. Keep a couple clean pair of coveralls in your truck so you can show up and look good. And when it's time to do the dirty work, put on your coveralls and do the job. Okay. Very simple, but it goes a long ways because you have no idea how many um, jobs are lost because they did not feel comfortable with you and say, well, I got to get one more estimate and you leave and they just, somebody else does it that looks more trustworthy or looks more professional along with clean clothes and a clean car. Groom yourself. There's no reason to look like you slept in your car. If you got, if you want to wear a beard, that's fine. Trim it, make it look clean. Look like, look like somebody handsome. Don't look like Santa Claus's drunk day off. Put some product in your hair so you look like you took a bath within the last three days. You know, I'm just saying your appearance means a lot. So let's just say you look good and you show up to these people's house. Here's the next thing that's really important. You have to start slow and talk to your customer. It's not like you work at Taco Bell and it's like, okay, what do you want? You want this? Bam, 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 bam. Give me your money or get out of line. You're not, you don't work at a junkyard. These are people that are asking you to solve a problem for them. So when you show up, you want to look good. And the next thing is talk to them. Hey, you called us because you had a problem. What is it? Well, it's a sink or a toilet or a shower or whatever the problem is. Talk with them about it. Ask them a few questions. How long has it been like this? Has anyone else tried to fix it before? Have you shopped around? Do you have any idea what it's going to cost to get this done? 
just to let them talk to you because then after you talk to them and you ask them a few questions, you can comfort them and show empathy and say, hey, you know, it's really terrible when that happens. And I know the only thing you want to do is just get it fixed so you can stop worrying about it. That's what I can do for you. Here's what I propose. And then you make your presentation, the money, the cost, the parts or whatever. That's the academic part of a job. Building rapport with the customer is really important because you're going to make them comfortable spreading their wallet for you. Okay? Don't forget that. You know, if you work for a big company, the people that own that company have put a lot of money into the equipment, into the, 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 all the logistics to make it work, keeping all of your hardware up and keeping all your, your, you know, your supplies that you need in stock so that you can do the job efficiently. The least you can do is look good and act right when you get in front of a customer. And when you start making more money, now, you know, if you have performance-based pay, you're going to make more money, but you're going to make your boss more money and he's going to reward you for that. I promise. Why would he want to give you more money? Well, one thing is if he pays you more money, you're more likely to stick around. The last thing an employer wants to do is have to retrain some other idiot. So if you know what you're doing, he wants to pay you as much as he can to make sure you stay. It makes his life just as much better as it makes yours when you make more money. So... That's just two things I wanted to point out because I see service industries completely drop the ball when it comes to the rapport they need to build with the customer and the appearance they present when they show up. I mean, who likes the look of a tow truck driver? Nobody. And you don't want to look that way when you show up to somebody's maybe million dollar house. You don't know. And it isn't like you guys aren't charging for what you do. Man, I've seen what it costs to get you guys to work on stuff. There's a ton of money involved in this. The least you can do is act the part Look professional, look good, and behave in a way that the customer likes you and he's comfortable with you solving his problem and giving you his money. That is the point of this video. I hope you have a great day. And listen to this, it's true. Run it by your boss, he'll verify this is true. Anyway, peace.